boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, this is John Gallo Ice Arena in Bourne, Massachusetts, home of the Division II South Sectional quarterfinals today between the Medfield Warriors and the Southeastern Regional Hawks. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high above the ice here on the Cape. No better weather to take a trip down Route 3 and go across the Bourne Bridge than a Saturday when it's snowing as we do each and every February and March. Well, we've got the Medfield Warriors, the ninth seed in this tournament, or rather the seventh seed in this tournament. They come in at 11, four and five, good for a 675 win percentage. And the number two seeded Hawks of Southeastern Regional slash West Bridgewater, 16, one and one in the regular season. Defeating Sandwich, speaking of the Cape on Wednesday night at the Canton Ice House by a score of four to three. They were down three one at the end of the second period. Came back after a pretty nasty hit that took out Jacob Kent. He missed the remainder of the game and I believe is not suited up tonight. The Hawks wearing their home white jerseys with a big hawk on the chest. Blue numbers the. Medfield Warriors wearing navy blue jerseys. The old Montreal Canadiens look with light blue trim and white numbers. Southeastern making a goaltender change for this game. Of course, Corey Mann had an admirable effort Wednesday at the Ice House. Well, tonight it's Steven Strachan, the senior goaltender. He has played seven games this season. A 1.28 goals against average and 864 save percentage. Compared to Mann, who's got a 104 save percentage, uh, goals against average rather, and a 934 save percentage. Here is number four, Aiden Wells, the sophomore out of West Bridgewater. He's lined up at defense and forward, depending on the needs of the moment. The shot gets away from Strachan, and number five, Dan Monroe, who had the eventual game-winning goal. That was offsides, but the linesman says it was on. Now it's Monroe coming away with it. He sends it high off glass and back out into the neutral zone. Medfield beating Nossett three to nothing for the right to be in this quarterfinal game. Medfield with a lot of offensive zone time early in this game. Southeastern yet to register a shot on goal. Now it's number 15 clearing it out, Liam Leiden. He had one of the goals on Wednesday night. Now it's number 14 in Ryan Kinney. Kinney loses the puck, Medfield clears out. And it's picked up in the Hawks zone by number nine, PJ Page. Now three on two in for the Hawks. And the pass goes across the slot, nobody on the receiving end. And now broken up by Shane Linehan. Southeastern needs to find their legs in this one. They have only one shot on net. No quality scoring opportunities as of yet. And we saw that Wednesday as well. They started very slow. And then in the span of about a minute and a half in the third period, they had tied the game. And a minute later, they took the lead off the eventual winner by Monroe. This one ramps high off of the stick of Linehan off the end boards. Now it is Matt Lavoie who had a tremendous game Wednesday night. Two assists and a goal for Matt Lavoie in the Hawks' first matchup of the postseason. An opportunity broken up by the Medfield defense. 
cleared back out into the neutral zone. Medfield carries it up ice into the southeastern zone. A good hip check block by Shane Linehan preventing a Medfield shot. But the Warriors with possession in the zone. Strachan grabs it with the stick and puts his glove over it for a faceoff. Both teams change 10.44 to go in the first period. Medfield with all the momentum. No score as of yet. Monroe winning the faceoff back to P.J. Page. Medfield takes it in the neutral zone and almost turning it over. George Valley was a step and a half behind it or it would have been a breakaway for the Hawks. Now a nice move, a shot glove saved by Strachan. Off of the end of his glove and to the end boards, but Medfield still threatening. Sent out in front, loose, and it's ping pong back to Valley, who can't get it into the offensive zone. Now it's Liam Wyden. He dumps it in. Hawks change out their defensive pairing. This one sent up into the penalty box area, which is located between the benches here at Gallo Ice Arena. A weird setup, but one of the more beautiful arenas that we get to see every so often. Points off of one of the Hawks and is loose in the neutral zone. And still no clean possession. Now Medfield fires off a shot, a save by Strachan. and he holds for the faceoff. As Medfield has had a lot of opportunities early in this first five minutes of this quarterfinal matchup. Another faceoff win for Southeastern. It's back to PJ Page. He sends it out looking for the long pass, and the shot by Medfield goes wide. Now it's number 24, Mike Tyre of the Warriors. This shot deflects to Linehan, who dumps it all the way down the river. Southeastern changes up. Now the Warriors with a 75-foot shot. Cage makes a nice move on the puck, but Medfield takes it right back, and the Warriors threatening, backhanding it off the end boards, trying to set up the Warrior offense now with nine minutes to go in the first period. Loose puck and whiffing on the clearing attempt, but it's gonna be picked up by Linehan. Linehan behind the southeastern net, throws it off of one of the Warriors forwards that was crashing, that was Phil Parker. And now Linehan whiffs on yet another clearing attempt, Medfield still with it. Four Hawks punching around the puck and finally Linehan Sends it to the blue line. Strachan makes a save off the slot shot from the far point. And he holds on for yet another faceoff. Southeastern is in a lot of trouble early here in this first period. Medfield with only half a dozen scoring opportunities and Southeastern with no quality scoring chance. Strachan has been strong in that so far. The shot pops up wide. And it's taken on the other side by Sam Palmer, the sophomore forward. Five goals, eight assists for Parker. And now it's lighting off the glass out into the neutral zone. Blocks in the neutral zone by Matt English, who had a goal on Wednesday night for Southeastern. Strachan stops it behind the net. Jacob Kent is in fact suited up tonight, so good to see he cleared the concussion protocol off of that bad hit. And now Medfield takes it over with an opportunity, unable to get a shot off with number four, Mike Vachin. Now it's Lavoy. Lavoy trying to send it out. English blocks it with his skate. And Medfield still with it. Astounding zone time for the Warriors and another stop and another save by Steven Strachan, the senior goalkeeper for Southeastern. 57 saves on 66 shots in the regular season for Strachan. Nine goals against. Would not surprise me at all if the Hawks go 
down by a couple of goals to see Corey Mannin. He played phenomenally the other night at Canton Ice House. It's the defense that has to go to work for the Warriors now, and a good break up there by P.J. Page. Phil Parker was unable to get his stick loose enough to fire off a shot, but it almost would have been a sure goal for the Warriors. Now yeah, sent across the blue line, slap shot, excellent block there by number 21, George Valley, the junior forward. Now this one pops out all the way down. Southeastern's got some tired defenders. Seven minutes to go in the first period. Medfield with astounding amounts of zone time and scoring opportunities here. And here's another one, a shot and a stick save by Strachan. P.J. Page with it now, glove to stick. Taken by Thomas Mondro, and now it's a two on two up ice for the Hawks. Page can't shake loose, and Joe Murphy ended up carrying it across the line, but Medfield right back in. Broken up now by Shane Linehan. Right off sides, waved off to Southeastern, takes it. Number 14 in, Ryan Kinney. An opportunity, a shot, and a pat save by the Medfield goalkeeper. And now on the other side, Leiden has to clear it back into the neutral zone. It's Mason Matthew on the save for Medfield. Stick save by Strachan, and loose, and Linehan sends it high off glass all the way down the river. It will go for an icing. 5.52 go in the first period, still scoreless. Medfield with their hands on the throats of the Southeastern Regional Hawks, but Steven Strachan has been a wall in net for the Hawks early in this game, negating each and every opportunity that the Warriors have had so far. And boy, off of the faceoff, English dumps it down into the midfield zone. Winner of this game plays in the semifinals of this Division II bracket. Deflection went just wide. Now Leiden dumps it back around the boards. Lavoie on the other side, he gets taken down from behind. And now it's a three on two for the Warriors. Medfield back in to get Leiden with a good stick, breaks it up in this uh, low slot. 5-10 to go, and Southeastern has to find their sea legs. English back to Leiden. He fires off a shot deflected into the protective netting. We have a stop in play, and the first faceoff coming in the Hawks offensive zone so far in this game. Five minutes even to go. The winner of this game, again, moving on to the semifinals. That would be March 5th, Tuesday night here at Gallo Ice Arena against the winner of Westwood and Bishop Feehan. That game tipping off earlier this afternoon. And it would be Westwood defeating Bishop Feehan two to one, the final score in that one. Medfield's going to tag up and negate the delayed offsides. They do just that. P.J. Page behind the net. We have a whistle, a stoppage. The Southeastern net came off its moorings. And it's going to be a neutral zone faceoff as Southeastern had possession of the puck and were well on their way to clearing it out of the zone. So it'll come just outside the Hawks' defensive zone. 424 to go on the first. Southeastern winning that faceoff. Shane Linehan off the boards and an opportunity here for the Hawks if they can catch up to it. They are unable to, but with the takeaway is Joe Murphy. Can the Hawks set up any type of offense? The answer is no. Medfield dumping it out. This one goes all the way back to the goalie who's quite able to pass it and he does there. Four minutes to go in the first. This one 
hit a player on the southeastern bench, and it's going to be a neutral zone faceoff. So 349 to go, neutral zone faceoff, right in front of the southeastern bench. Well, we've seen more and more of these co-ops, as we call them, Southeastern Regional tagging up with West Bridgewater as the two programs were not viable to sustain on their own. You put them together and you've got a perennial contender. And we've seen a lot of the programs in the state move to that. And who knows, Brockton could be the next one. Three and a half to go in the first period, still scoreless Medfield dominating in every facet of the game so far. Strachan has been an absolute wall. Linehan lost the stick, able to pick it up, and Medfield keeps it in the zone right on the blue line. Linehan goes down. Medfield an opportunity here, sent out in front, and number four couldn't get a stick on it. Mike Vatchen, he would have had an empty net. And now an opportunity for English. His shot, and a glove save by Mason Matthew. Two fifty-four to go in the first, and Southeastern just registered just their second quality scoring chance of the evening. Headfield winning the face-off. Lydon throws a fifty-foot shot on, saved by Matthew, and he holds for the face-off. Now Southeastern off the faceoff, the shot. That was P.J. Page right in front of the Medfield bench just inside the blue line and Matthew makes another save, 2.38 to go. Southeastern just trying to get a couple shots on net, feel out the goaltender. Page indirect self pass. Takes it over, backhanded out. Page has it. Page, a 75 foot shot from the red line, and that was blockered away by Matthew. Southeastern's going to tag up here. Blade offsides waved off. Medfield with the puck, and he's trying to make a nice move. A shot, and it was blocked away by Liam Lydon. And now Southeastern with numbers up ice there. In going to opt to dump in and go for a full change. Lydon won't hold over. Now a nice takeaway there by number 14, Ryan Kinney. Linehan stick got in the way and now trying to catch the Warriors in a change, unable to do so late. Netfield dumps back in. Out in front, and a goal for Medfield number four, Mike Thatcher, the sophomore forward, able to slip it right past Strachan on the near post. Nothing fancy about that goal, just crash the net, see what happens, and Strachan left about an inch and a half of space between his right pad and the right post, and Thatcher just snuck it right past him. 1-0 Medfield, a buck 26 to go in the first period. Hey, that is a goal that Strachan wants back. Now Medfield with a little bit of gusto, trying to extend the lead. Slot shot from the high slot, deflected, and it pops about two inches loose of the Southeastern goal, which came off its moorings. And the Hawks suddenly are scrambling with a minute and five seconds to go in the first period. They started off slow Wednesday night against Sandwich. Sandwich actually scored first in that game. And then Southeastern turned it on. Now stuck in the referee's skates. Medfield with dominating point play to keep every close puck in. 
Caravan getting the assist. And Aiden Karachi, the secondary assist on that goal. So 35 seconds to go in the first period. 1-0 for the Medfield Warriors. P.J. Page backhanding it around. He takes a hit well after he got rid of the puck. Now asking the ref why there wasn't a call there. Medfield takes over. They dump it in, stopped by Strachey. Medfield takes it, but English edges his man off the puck and now taken down, cross-checked, no call was Adam Falcioni. The buzzer sounds and we are at the end of a very, very fast moving first period. It's one of the Medfield Warriors leading the Southeastern Regional Hawks in the Division II South Sectional quarterfinal here at Galloway Serena in Bourne. The lone goal, Mike Bashin, assisted by Ben Caravan and Aiden Parachi. We're gonna step aside, take a short break and bring you second period action right after this. How to continue the talk with your friend about their mental health after you ask about how they were feeling. Put down that phone. Do it. Nobody's texting you. Phone down. Good. Now it's time to listen. If they're not ready to talk yet, check back in later. I'm always here if you want to talk, okay? That was great. Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Awkward. Hey guys, what's up? It's Liza Koshy, and today I'm going to tell you a little story about my anxiety. So I turned 20. Um, I had been moved out to L.A. I was doing different stuff out here and having fun and just being myself until anxiety hit me like a brick. <laughs> Mine specifically is social anxiety, which is ironic for the job that I have as a social influencer. <laughs> talking to a camera was something that always made me feel comfortable. Um, talking to a camera right now is much better than me talking to a person because I'm a socially anxious person. So dealing with my anxiety was um, hard and I'm still dealing with it, but it's not something that can't be dealt with. I have a friend who opened up to me about his OCD and it was something that was very tough for him to open up about because he had never opened up to anybody about it before. And I completely related to that because I had been holding in my feelings about my anxiety for an entire year. It just started this free flow of conversation between both of us about my anxiety, about his OCD, about these two things that we didn't know about each other. We thought we knew each other so well, but it wasn't until we opened up about our mental health that we really, really connected even more. Now we actually have a code name whenever I'm feeling anxious or whenever he's having, you know, his thoughts. It's called Tiffany. It's just like, hey, Tiffany's here. She's freaking here, man. It feels good to be able to label something and, and, and put it away in your brain rather than let it become your entire brain in itself. Everybody has some sort of mental health to take care of. It is a part of your health. It's something that you live with and that's something that you learn to deal with by opening up to people about it. It allowed me to understand myself more as a person, it allowed me to accept that it's a part of me rather than pushing it off and saying, no, this isn't me, this isn't me. It's a part of me and it's something that I'll always live with and deal with, but it doesn't define me. I'm Joel Gamron, national chef of Sur La Table and host of Scraps, a cooking show that tackles food waste. And I just whipped up the most amazing Thanksgiving and I have just the right amount of pumpkin pie just the perfect amount of turkey to rock out the most amazing leftover pumpkin pie and turkey curry. So I've got a big Dutch oven here. I'm gonna grab just some good old fashioned canola oil, baby. These are mustard seeds. This is what mustard's made out of. It's not just in that little jar. So I've got some onions, I've got some chili and garlic. And when you're cooking Indian food, these are mainly the three ingredients you gotta have. And again, one pot. And what I love about the guesstimator, I knew exactly from the start how much leftovers I was gonna have. Things are starting to kind of get sticky and brown and really, really, really fragrant. And you should be on high heat this whole time. This is quick cooking. Again, we wanna get you out of the kitchen and enjoying food with all your friends and fam. 
Now we've got four spices here. If you only have three of these four, you can still rock this out, I promise you. You've got garam masala, coriander, cumin, and turmeric. Garam masala might be the tough one, but it's worth it to go find that. Into the hot oil, into those beautiful onions, garlic, and chili. It's gonna toast up and your whole house is going to transform. Pumpkin pie filling in. Oh, now it's starting to look like a curry, baby. This looks so, so good. Now, every curry needs a little bit of sweetness, and since it's fall, we're going maple. Is it traditional? No. Is it bomb? Yeah. A couple of cans of coconut milk, and this is gonna bring some richness, but at the same time, a little lightness. So I've got some cilantro, and if you know me, again, I hate wasting everything. So we're gonna use the stems in the curry and the leaves on top. The turkey flavors we've had, we're kind of tired of. So to add this to this beautiful kind of foreign deal is really gonna knock people off their socks. Let's check this out, it's been about 10 minutes. Oh, I mean, it's, it's heaven. I'm just gonna pull some out. You can see the mustard seeds, the chili, all that pull apart, beautiful delicate turkey. That leftover pie crust we threw into the oven and it got kind of crispy. Now let's try this out. Mm. It, it's so different than everything that you had the night before. It's everything I want. It's comforting. I absolutely adore this dish. And if you want this recipe and even more food waste tips, and of course, the guesstimator, head over to savethefood.com. I'll see you there. Gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into John Galloway Arena in beautiful Bourne, Massachusetts for second period action between the Medfield Warriors and the Southeastern Regional slash West Bridgewater Hawks. Once again, I'm Matt Nelson. Bring you all the action high atop the ice here on the Cape in the Division II South Sectional Quarterfinal. The score Medfield one, Southeastern nothing. Could be quite a few more than that but goaltender Steven Strachan for the Hawks has been phenomenal in net. On the other side, it's Mason Matthew who has countered the very few opportunities that Southeastern has had. And the Hawks need to get something going in the offensive zone and they have to do it early in the second period to shift the massive momentum that is in favor of the Warriors. The Hawks wearing their home white jerseys as the number two seed. With the Hawk on the chest, white trim around the royal blue numbers. The Warriors, navy blue jerseys, white trim around the light blue lettering. That lone goal, Mike Vachon, assisted by Ben Caravan, Aiden Parachi. Southeastern, much like they did on Wednesday night at the Canton Ice House, starting off slow and expected to heat up as the game goes on. Medfield coming in as the seventh seed, 11, four and five on the season. The Hawks 16, one and one. Medfield and defeating Nossett 3-0 to get their way here. Southeastern defeating Sandwich in their first round matchup. Now it squirts out into the neutral zone. Medfield with it, starting off with a lot of offensive zone time early in the second period. We're two and a half minutes into this period. Loose in the crease and it squirts out to the far corner. Southeastern dumps it all the way down the river it will go for an icing. Field has it off the face-off and still with 
good play on the blue line to keep it in. Finally, Southeastern able to clear it out, but Medfield takes it right back in the neutral zone, and they dump it in. And now it's a good opportunity for Medfield, broken up there by P.J. Page. The Warriors able to dump it back in. No penalties called as of yet in this game. Warriors just dominating all facets of play here. This high shot goes on, a high stick would have been called if Medfield touched it. Instead, Southeastern ices it. Medfield winning yet another faceoff. Now Southeastern able to clear it out. And it's going to be a semi-break. Excellent job edging off the puck. And two Hawks collide with each other. It was Matt Lavoie and number 19, Adam Falcioni. And Medfield escaped there. to go here in the second period. 1-0 Medfield on top. Southeastern with an opportunity. But nothing to show for it. Pad save Strachan who has been phenomenal save for that one lone Medfield goal. A shot and another goal for Medfield. A wrister from the high hash mark. And the Warriors up 2-0 with 10.36 to go in the second. Medfield student section coming live there in the far corner of the rink. And now Southeastern really has to get it going. Save by Strach and 10.05 to go in the second. Southeastern has to find a way to light a fire. Field. More zone time for the Warriors. A shot, glove saved by Strachan, loose. Medfield takes it back. The Warriors trying to set up their offense yet again. They do a slap shot, hit a stick, and it goes to the end boards. Going to be picked up there by Joe Murphy. And now trying to catch the Warriors in a change are the Southeastern Hawks, it's a three on two. Now Medfield able to get back three on three, set off the outside of the cage, loose. 
And Mason Matthew able to get his glove on it for the faceoff. Something you rarely see in high school, the Medfield Warriors suiting up four goaltenders. Four. All season long, those are Bruce Salisbury, Cameron Guinta, Garrison Schilling, and the starter, Mason Matthew. This game goes on to face Westwood. Here on Tuesday night at Gallo Ice Arena. Stick saved by Strachan. Medfield looking for the tip in the crease. And it went wide. Now Southeastern off the glass, but Medfield Able to pinch it off at the blue line. And now the Warriors, another opportunity. High shot off of the crossbar. Southeastern sending it all the way down. Picked up by Aiden Wells. Right, it's Mike Vatchin for the Warriors. Vatchin has it now. Jacob Kent, who was the spark plug on Wednesday night after he was concussed. Sends it all the way down for an icing. Seven thirty-nine to go, just about halfway through the second period. 2-0, the Mansfield Warriors leading the Southeastern Regional Hawks. Sticked aside by Strachan. Sent high off glass. And it's going to go for an icing. We'll do it again. Sent around the boards. Medfield keeps it in, at least momentarily. Southeastern clearing it out. And again, all the way down for an icing. Five icings against the Hawks in the first half of this period. I guess you could say lucky it's not NHL rules because these poor kids wouldn't be able to change out and get a break. It'd be some very tired Hawks on the far end of the ice. Medfield shot from the point, sticked away by Strachan. Medfield, indirect self pass, and taken back by number 14, Brian Kinney, his shot gloved and down by Mason Matthew, he holds on for the faceoff. Medfield winning the faceoff. Southeastern taking it a shot. Loose in the low slot and cleared out. And now Southeastern's going to get back on defense. That's going to be offsides against the Medfield Warriors. It is 6.38 to go in the second. Action picking up quite nicely here in the last minute or so. Here's Southeastern and this game goes status quo. So the rest of the second period, you gotta think about changing out your goaltender to light that spark under your team and try to get something going.
59 goals scored by this Medfield team during the regular season. It's quite the polar opposite of the 119 that the Hawks have put up in the regular season. But anything goes in the playoffs. Slap shot goes well wide, maybe intentionally. Medfield able to keep it in. P.J. Page behind the net. Medfield pinching it off again at the blue line and dumping it back deep. 5.45 to go. This one sent all the way down. Another icing against the Southeastern Regional Hawks. Make it six this period. Five forty-four to go now in the second. 2-0 Medfield. Another defensive zone faceoff for the Hawks. Shot blocked away and an opportunity for the Hawks. They can't get to it. It's number 12, Jack Lyons, the senior defenseman. They're getting that opportunity for Southeastern. Now five and a half to go. Medfield with it in the Southeastern zone. Sent out in front. A shot from... The blue line, that went about a foot and a half wide of the right post. Still no penalties called in this game. And oh, what a nice move by that's number four, Aiden Wells. But Medfield able to regain their composure and take the puck in their own defensive zone. Now it's brought up by Mike Tyler. Tyler flying into the southeastern zone, back ending it out in front. It was sticked away by Strach, and now Medfield punching up at the blue line. It squirts out into the neutral zone. The Warriors regain composure, dump it back in. This one's sticked away by Strach, and P.J. Page getting double and triple shifted here on defense for the Hawks. Liam Wyden unable to do anything there and now off of a skate and it goes wide. Southeastern has the puck. Taken away by the Warriors. A collision. Bodies flying everywhere. There's a loose stick on right outside the center ice faceoff dot. Not really sure what the heck happened there but the puck is all the way down on this side of the ice. A shot goes wide. Wyden. He goes down. Liam Wyden might be hurt. He's very slow to get up. And they're going to stop play here. Liam Wyden down on the ice. Off of the far faceoff dot in the midfield zone. And that is going to be a big loss if Wyden is out for the remainder of this game. He has played more than half of the defensive shifts with his defensive partner who is now over there as well, P.J. Page. 3.42 to go in the second. It's 2-0 Medfield. Injury timeout here at Gallo Ice Arena. A silent Gallo Ice Arena as Liam Lydon is down. And on his side, he went into the boards awkwardly as after he was tripped up. He went legs first into the boards. And now he is slowly trying to get to all fours, rolling over onto his back and sitting up. Not able to get up and skate off with a little bit of help. It is his left leg that looks limp. Biden heads over to the southeastern bench. 3.42 to go in the second. And maybe that's what Southeastern needed, much like it was Wednesday night. Jacob Kent got concussed. And then Southeastern came back and scored three unanswered goals in the third period to 
ultimately win that game. And there's an opportunity for the Hawks. And that shot blocked away. Medfield with it. Taken away out in front. And sticked away by Matthew. And there's a Hawk down in the low slot. That was Matt English. Medfield back the other way. 3.20 to go. Someone lost a glove. A shot is saved by stretching to the end boards. Now 3.15 to go. And... Penalty is going to be called here on Medfield. The offending player, Jack Lyons, the senior defenseman. I believe it's going to go for a hook. First power play of the game for either side. Medfield winning the faceoff, trying to fire it right down the river. Southeastern negates that possibility. We're going to have a slash. Who's it going to go against? Well, it's number 14 of Southeastern Regional. Ryan Kinney headed to the box. And so ends the game's first power play. Four on four for a minute and 52 seconds, after which Medfield will have an eight second power play, which would be their first of the game. They're just getting around to announcing Lyons' penalty for hooking. Now four on four, a lot of ice out there. A shot pad saved by Matthew. Slashing is going to go against uh, Ryan Kinney. Southeastern with it. Now Matt Lavoie trying to get it into the high slot. Lavoie with a nice move diving. A shot sticked down by Matthew and he covers for the faceoff. The best offensive sequence of the night for Southeastern Regional. There's a minute 12 left on the four on four. 2.22 left in the second period. Lavoie in to take the face off, off the referee's skate. Back to number 20 of Medfield, that's Harrison O'Brien, the junior defenseman. O'Brien loses it, quickly regains himself, and Southeastern takes it in the neutral zone. P.J. Page over to Shane Linehan, who quite possibly is going to take Leiden's spot. That one hit our comrades out of play from Medfield TV who made a very nice catch. Shout out to Medfield TV over there. One handed grab by one of their commentators. Broken up by Lavoy. Redfield with it, 28 seconds left on the four on four. At the conclusion of that, there'll be an eight second power play for the Warriors. Lavoy with it, he has to spin and now Southeastern is just dangling in the neutral zone. Two Warriors collide, a slap shot, and this one zings high off the end boards. Number nine trying to clear it out, John Schofield. He's being pressured by number 19 of the Hawks, that's Adam Falcioni. Eight second power play for the Warriors. They clearly don't know what's going on because there's only four of them on the ice. Still only now the Medfield gets five out there, but it's at the conclusion of what would have been their power play. So a little bit of a miscommunication there for the Warriors. Icing against Southeastern, but we're back to even strength, five on five. Here with 57 seconds left in the midfield bench screaming at each other on whose fault it was that they didn't get a power play. Medfield winning the faceoff, trying to drive it close in. Not a shot, and it goes wide. It might have gone off the blocker of Steven Strachan. Now a two on one for Southeastern. A shot, and unable to get his stick on it was George Valley. 
Off the rebound, it was Aiden Wells creating that opportunity off the block and the initial shot. Now 30 seconds to go in the second period. Dan Monroe has it. Monroe sending it out, looking for Valley. Medfield dangling with it along the blue line. Gloved down by Stretch, and he holds on for the faceoff. 16 seconds to go here in the second frame. Opportunity to take a quick breather. A lot of action on that four on four. Sixteen seconds to go, period number 2-2-0 Medfield. Southeastern with the majority of chances since co-captain Liam Lydon left with a left leg injury after going awkwardly into the boards. Now three on two for Southeastern. I believe there was an offsides, but right as the buzzer sounded, so at the end of the second period, it's 2-0. The Medfield Warriors trying to upset the number two seeded Southeastern Regional Hawks. The lone goal in that period scored by Steve O'Leary. The other Medfield marker, Mike Vachin. 2-0 Medfield over Southeastern at the end of the second period. We're going to step aside and bring you third period action right after this. <laughs> Labels is the Ad Council's diversity and inclusion campaign, which promotes acceptance and inclusion of everyone, regardless of gender, sexuality, age, race, religion, and disability. And this year, we're back at PAX for a second time with an interactive gaming experience, a gift booth, and two great panels. Really excited to bring the League of Extraordinary Humans here to PAX West. We thought, what better way to engage gamers than create a gaming experience? As players move around PAX and visit different locations, they're going to be presented with implicit bias questions from Love Has No Labels. And as they answer each of those questions, they're going to be rewarded with some tips and information for how they can create a more inclusive world. Once they're completed, unlock a digital trading card that features a real-life superhero who's fighting for diversity and inclusion in their own community. You know, I like playing video games, I like connecting with people, and if I can use my voice to help other people like me, or people who are different from me understand what it's like to be me, then that's, that's my goal really. I think diversity is always important because when you are not intentionally including people, you are unintentionally excluding them, and that means you're just missing out. It's all just lost opportunities. Gaming is already full of diverse people, right? I mean, that's the whole point of, for me of coming here, is that I get to see all these different kinds of people in this environment. In times of darkness, gaming is what we go to. And if we're sitting there with one single representation, a lot of us don't have that kind of feeling of comfort and home. And the more we open that up, the more we can share with the world what games are. And I'm pretty sure there's a large percentage of the population that are a gamer in one way, shape, or form. And why not open it up for everyone? I think that showing representation for lots of different groups of people, because lots of different groups of people exist, is very important uh, so that those people know there's someone out there who's like them. It feels it's really good to know that you have people around you that can that support you and they're just like you and you're not weird or different uh, than anyone else, even though you may think so. Diversity in gaming is important because we need representation for everyone. We need representation for those who are elderly, those who are young, women, men, everyone, everywhere, really. We just need to be welcoming and accepting of people. Love has no labels. <laughs> Hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. 
If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. Markiplier, I run a YouTube channel, but today I'm here to talk to you about the awkward moment in trying to talk to your friends. Mental health is an interesting subject because everybody knows about it, but nobody really knows how to talk about it. And no matter how much experience you have, there's no easy way to tell your friend that they seem off. Me and my friend Tyler, we've known each other since fourth grade. When I reach out to Tyler, it's because I see him hurting and I see him being affected by the pressures of his life, you know, bringing him down, and, and he needs to hear that I'm there for him. As soon as you see that kind of person start to close off and throw up walls, that's when you know that something's going wrong. Tyler and I have such an understanding that the moment that we need to talk to each other, all we have to do is Hey, something's wrong with you. You need to talk about this. And then we start talking about it for a couple hours. For those who have new friends or just see the signs in someone and yet don't know them very well, that open dialogue is only welcome. If you really care about someone and you really want to help, you understand that the signs may be there and they may not want to talk about it but it's always important to keep those lines of communication available. If not open, at least available. Let them know that you care enough to be there when they need it. Because there's times when I'm so closed off that I wanna work on my own stuff. It doesn't hurt me or make me angry that someone says, hey, I noticed that you're stressed. I'm not gonna intrude, but if you need to talk, we can go catch a movie or something like that. It can be that casual. As long as you acknowledge that it's there, it can lead to the help that is needed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into John Galloway's Arena in Bourne, Massachusetts. Boy, third period action between the Medfield Warriors and the Southeastern Regional West Bridgewater Hawks. Once again, I'm Matt, Matt Dog, Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the ice here in Bourne, Massachusetts for the MIAA South Sectional Division II quarterfinal. Injury update, Liam Leiden is not going to be returning as he was skating off at the end of the period. We saw his Right leg was uh, bent in a way it shouldn't be. The score, Medfield to Southeastern, nothing, a lot of work to do. Medfield's got 18 shots in the first two periods. Southeastern with just eight. Southeastern has to start throwing some pucks towards the crease and hope for a deflection or a fluky goal or something, but Medfield's defense has been phenomenal thus far in this game. Lavoy slap shot sticked away by Mason Matthew, the junior goalie who has pitched a clean sheet thus far. Opportunity for Medfield, shot, stick saved by Steven Strachan. Now it's Matt English holding it in the near faceoff dot. Sending it out, trying to get it to Dan Monroe. Monroe off the boards, and he gets it back. Back to Matt English. English behind the southeastern net. All the way down, icing waved off, it hit one of the Warriors. Southeastern takes it, oh, trying to sling it across the slot. This one <laughs> ping-ponging off of Linehan's stick. He popped it up a couple of times, now throws it off the boards to get it back deep. 12.40 to go in the third period, 2-0 Medfield over Southeastern. And Medfield smelling an upset. But they're not gonna stop pressuring. Slapshot goes well wide, might have gotten the end of the stick.
Now an opportunity for Southeastern. It's going to be Joe Murphy retrieving the puck back deep. There's been an eight second power play for Southeastern. That turned up no shots. The four on four had quite a bit of opportunity for Southeastern. And then the eight second power play that wasn't for the Medfield Warriors. They didn't have five skaters on the ice. And we're going to have a penalty here against Medfield. Speaking of power plays, the Hawks will go on their second power play of the game. It's going to be a hook. Called against number nine, John Schofield, the junior forward. You got to score on this power play for your Southeastern. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Sent back to PJ Page. He slings it D to D to, to Matt Lavoie. Four forwards on the ice for the Hawks. Page grabbing it now, and odd man rush short handed for the Warriors. It's a two on one. Lavoie breaks it up. Now Dan Monroe off the glass looking for Page. Time winding down on the power play. Minute and a half to go. Page bringing it out. P.J. Page carrying it all the way into the midfield zone. Some room to work with. Trying to sling it to Monroe, who is waiting on the far post. Didn't really connect. Lavoie now back deep. Lavoie calling for the puck. High slot. He goes opposite corner. A shot. And it's blocked away. All the way across. Lavoie retrieves at the blue line. He slaps it back deep and loose. The midfield crowd calling for a penalty as one of the Warriors hit the ice and quite gingerly, I believe that's number five, Jim Casalito. Another shorthander opportunity for the Warriors, number 23, Phil Parker. Lavoie has to retrieve it behind Steven Strachan, now setting it up for Monroe, who is gassed. He has to go for a change. It goes all the way down, no icing. 30 seconds to go on the man advantage for the Hawks. Matt Lavoie with it. Over to Linehan. Now up for number 13, Chris Smith. Now it's Ryan Kinney. Kinney who negated the Hawks' first power play opportunity by getting a call of his own slashing eight seconds in. Now three seconds, two and one on the power play. Back to even strength, five on five. Two shots on goal for the Hawks on that power play. Opportunity, that one kind of dribbled in and it was sticked away by Mason Matthew. Now Page throws one in, blocker to side. Redfield getting a little bit lackadaisical with the puck in their defensive zone. 9.15 to go in the third period. Southeastern trying to claw their way back from a two goal deficit to start the third. Left behind now for Sean McTavish. McTavish shot. And it's saved by Strachan, shoving match in Sues. And there'll be a defensive zone faceoff for the Hawks. 9.03 to go. Page and Wells on defense. Uh, Matt English, the freshman on the ice. Dan Monroe. And George Valley. Crisp skating and passing for the Warriors. A shot. And it got the very, very end of Strachan's glove. And now it's sent back in. And that one goes well wide. PJ Page. Tapping it up, looking for Valley. All the way around. Matt English becomes the hitty instead of the hitter as he was decked by Mike Vachin, who scored the first goal of the evening. A shot blocker to side, but loose, and it's a goal for Metfield. Number 24 picking up the loose trash. That's Mike Tyler. 
Strachan had no idea where it was gonna land after it hit the dead center of his blocker and the Warriors go up three to nothing with 8.15 to go. Southeastern now in dire straits as the number two seed. Now with a lot of ground to make up and not a lot of time. Here's Matt Lavoy. High shot popping up over the midfield goal. That goal assist, uh, Mike Tyler assisted by. Jack Lyons and Aiden Parachi, both of those guys with two assists on the night. PJ Page unable to get possession of the puck. Medfield with more offensive zone time. Now Matt Lavoy sends it out, forcing Medfield to tag up. It's gonna be PJ Page taking it. One of the Warriors hit the deck in the neutral zone, no penalty called. And an offside's called now against Southeastern. 7.05 to go in the third period. Three nothing, the Warriors over the Hawks. Winner of this game moving on to face Westwood who won their game earlier today at the Canton Ice House over Bishop Feehan. Two to one, the final score in that one. Here come the Hawks. Broken up, dumped in by Southeastern, and now Bobby's hitting the ice. This one ramps up out of play. On the other side of the bracket, Canton defeating Medway earlier today. Six to nothing. The Bulldogs of Canton High School, whose home we were at Wednesday night at the Ice House. 20 0 and 1 on the regular season. 976 win percentage. Some astounding numbers for the Bulldogs. This one sent all the way down. A penalty called on Ryan Kinney of the Hawks. Kinney's second slashing penalty that has led to both opportunities on the power play for the Warriors. Now slung across, couldn't get clean possession of it. It's down to number 15, Sam Palmer. Palmer down low to Phil Parker. Parker dangling with it. He gets it over to Mike Tyler, one of the three midfield goal scorers. D to D now back to Tyler, a shot blocker side by Strachan. Medfield able to hold in, at least momentarily. P.J. Page takes possession and he throws it all the way down the ice. 107 to go in the main advantage for the Warriors. Five and a half to go in the third period. Medfield trying to create some space now throughout the neutral zone. Indirect self pass doesn't really work for it. Number nine, John Schofield. And Southeastern able to clear it out into the neutral zone. Matt Lavoy trying to create a shorthanded opportunity. Lavoy unable to complete the nifty stick move. Medfield takes over a shot. That one zings high and wide. Medfield able to recover on the far side. P.J. Page takes it and he's going to dump it out. Tapped by Dan Monroe. And Medfield takes over with 15 seconds to go in the man advantage, 442 left in the third period. Broken up, self pass, and that will waste out the remainder of the power play. Number 15, 
for some remarkable reason, Liam Lydon is back on the ice. And he is skating very gingerly. Watch his right leg as he skates. It was bent in a way that it shouldn't be. And now Lydon goes awkwardly into the boards. He gets up, still very ginger on that right leg. LaVoy causing havoc in the corner. It pops up, backhander opportunity right through the crease. No warrior was on the other end. Now a slap shot deflected, but well wide by number 19. That is Justin Fuglestad. Now it's Phil Parker. Ben Caravan, one of the assists, has it behind the net. Try and wrap around. Thrown off of Leiden's skates. Now an opportunity for the Warriors, broken up by Aiden Wells. Now Leiden backhands it out into the neutral zone. Medfield back in. Linehan edges him off the puck. Now Wells up to, that's number 19 for the Hawks. Falcioni now. Linehan through the neutral zone, dumps it off of the boards. All the way down deep into the Medfield zone. 3-10 to go in the third period, possibly Southeastern season. Sent all the way down the ice. Medfield playing the clock game now. Lydon off the end boards. Medfield in the right place at the right time takes the loose puck. A shot off of the pad in the outside of the post. Now it's number 11, Nolan Franks for the Warriors. Right into the crease. And couldn't get a stick on it. It was number 22, Colin Quint. Now Lydon through the neutral zone looking for English. It trickles deep, two and a half to go in the third period and Southeastern changes out as Lydon still visibly in a lot of pain on that right leg. Good passing through the neutral zone. It is English, now a shot. And Medfield negates that opportunity. 2-10 to go in the third period. Three goals down, and now you got to look at Steven Strachan, who should be abandoning ship any moment now to get the extra attacker on. One fifty-four to go. P.J. Page knocked down from behind. He was punched in the back of the head by number 16, Aiden Parachi. He's going to be in the box for the rest of this game. Page slow to get up in the corner. One fifty to go in the third period. It's a power play. for the remainder of the game or until Southeastern scores. Oh. Southeastern's going to call their timeout here. You'd almost think you empty the net right here with 150 to go, maximize the time, or if not, just as soon as Southeastern wins the faceoff, but number 16, Aiden Parachi with two assists, the sophomore forward in the box for the remainder of this game. It's 3-0 Medfield trying to upset the number two seed, 16-1 and 1 Southeastern Regional Hawks for the right to go against Westwood in the semifinals of this Division II South sectional bracket. If Southeastern completes the miraculous comeback, not only will we need a pacemaker, but we'll be here on Tuesday night. One fifty to go in the period. Medfield winning the big defensive zone faceoff. PJ Page taking it on the blue line. It remains on sides. Strachan drifting towards the hash marks. It's Page on the right side. Four forwards, one defenseman, and that is PJ Page. A shot off of the glove of Matthew, and still no word from the bench. And there goes Strach, an extra attacker on for the Southeastern Regional Hawks. It's going to be number 14, Ryan Kinney. Medfield takes it. P.J. Page with a nice glove save at the blue line. His shot, and that one ramps up high and out of play. 123 to go on the penalty to Parachi. 113 
to go in regulation. A four by six hole on one side of the ice. Medfield's gonna be shooting for it. The good thing for the Warriors is that they can ice the puck with no ramifications. They do, and it finds the four by six gap. And that's game, that goal scored by Sam Palmer, who just got it inside the near post. Four to nothing, Medfield is gonna advance. So for the second consecutive year, Southeastern's going to fall here at Gallo Ice Arena and born earlier than anticipated. A shot, a glove save by Mason Matthew, who is now fighting to keep the clean sheet. Four goal scorers for Medfield in no particular order. Mike Tyre, Sam Palmer, Steve O'Leary, and Mike Batchum. Handful of assists to go around. Lavoie shoots and loose. Medfield's going to take it over with 40 seconds to go. P.J. Page at the blue line, throws it, blocked away by one of the legs. Two Hawks collide. Lavoie picks it up right at center ice. Back ending it for Page. Page gets taken down. Now it's Lavoie, there's gonna be a penalty on Medfield and Southeastern's gonna let the Warriors touch it. Page was taken down and Medfield player is number 22 pleading his case. That's Colin Quint, he'll be in the box. For the remaining 18 seconds of this game. It's gonna be a five on three here for the Hawks and now a goalie change with 18 seconds left. Shot Lavoy blocked away. The buzzer sounds and the Southeastern Regional. West Bridgewater Hawks have been shut out here at Gallo Ice Arena by a score of four to nothing to the seventh seeded Medfield Warriors. The Hawks eliminated here in Bourne for the second consecutive season. And the number two seed not happy with their performance here tonight. It was Corey Mann and Nett to start that third period. He was replaced by Steven Strachan. 4-0 your final score, the Medfield Warriors defeating the number two seed, Southeastern Regional Hawks. Twenty-six shots on net for the Warriors. And only 16 shots on net all game for the Hawks. And so the number two seed eliminated. It will be Medfield and Westwood going at it in the semifinals on this side of the bracket. Four to nothing, your final score here from Gallo Ice Arena and Bourne. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, thank our cameraman for tonight's festivities. The Greek Freak, Phil Philippides. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.